Welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be delving into an intriguing passage from the Bible, specifically Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. This thought-provoking passage raises questions about the origins of humanity, the nature of the sons of God, and God's response to the corruption of mankind. As we study the text, we'll explore various interpretations and delve into the historical and cultural context to gain a deeper understanding of these verses. Whether you're a curious Bible enthusiast, a seeker of spiritual insight, or simply interested in exploring ancient texts, this video is for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more engaging Bible studies and thought-provoking discussions. Let's dive in. In this chapter 6 we see not only the flood, but also the reasons for that judgment of God. Let's read verses 1 and 2. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. The matter of the sons of God, and the daughters of men, is a matter bound for endless discussion. There are many people who believe that the sons of God were angels. I do not accept this position at all. Most of my professors also taught that the sons of God were angels, and I recognize that many present-day expositors take that position. However, I cannot accept this point of view because, if those were good angels, they would not have committed that sin and, on the other hand, bad angels could never have been designated as sons of God. Furthermore, the children were, in this case, men, and not monstrosities. I don't know why many assume those sons were giants. We'll deal with this more fully when we get to verse 4. Now let's read verse 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. We believe that Noah preached for one hundred twenty years, and during that period the Spirit of God was making an effort to communicate with men so that they would turn to God. The Apostle Peter narrated with great clarity that it was back in the days of Noah when the Spirit of God tried to draw human beings to God, but they did not want to return. The Apostle says in his first letter, in chapter 3 18 and 19. For Christ also died for sins once, the just for the unjust, to bring us to God, dead in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. These spirits were in prison when Peter wrote, but they were preached to in Noah's day. How do we know? Verse 20 of this last passage goes on to say, who were once disobedient when the patience of God waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through the water. When were they disobedient? In that time of God's patience, in the days of Noah, during those 120 years. Let's go back to the Genesis passage and read verse 4. And there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God were united with the daughters of men and they bore children to them. These are the heroes of old, men of renown. It says that there were giants on the earth in those days, but does not state that they were the descendants of the sons of God and the daughters of men. It does say this about offspring. These are the heroes of old, men of renown. We don't talk about monsters here. The account here makes it clear that the giants were on earth before this took place and simply means that the said descendants were extraordinary individuals. In other words, there was a population made up of diverse people. Humanity has a great capacity. Man has been created in a tremendous and marvelous way. This is a great truth that we have lost sight of. The idea that man arose from some protoplasm, or that he came from debris or seaweed is utterly absurd. Evolution is nothing more than a theory, as far as science is concerned. In it, there is nothing conclusive. It is a philosophy like any other and as such, it can be accepted or rejected. When it has been accepted, it has led to promoting some crazy solutions to the world's problems. Are we capable of solving these problems, putting in order what is wrong? If we have evil within ourselves, it is the delusion of our time, that human beings believe they are better than they really are. The human being is suffering because of the fall, and a tremendous and atrocious fall. He is today in a state of total depravity and until this reality is not taken into account, we will find ourselves in trouble in all aspects. So what do we have here in verse 4? The way I see it, 
Genesis is a book of genealogies, a book of families. The sons of God constitute the divine line that descends from Adam, through Seth, and the daughters of men belong to the line of Cain. What we have in this case is that the two lines were intermingled by mixed marriages until, finally, the whole line was corrupted, although not totally, as there was an exception. This, then, is the situation reflected in this biblical passage. Although I don't want to dwell on it, as I said before, I recognize that many good Bible commentators take the opposite view, that God's children are really angels. It is a question of interpretation of some facts, which should not alienate anyone, since it does not affect basic beliefs about the Bible. What was the condition of the earth before the flood? What caused God to send the judgment of the flood? Let's read verse 5. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Here is described the condition of the human family that inhabited the earth. We read the Lord's statement in verses 6 and 7. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. What weighed on the Lord? The corruption of the human being. It is as if God had changed his mind and intended to remove man from the earth. This was a way of expressing God's displeasure for man's wickedness. But although God grieved and felt an unbearable weight for man's sin, he did not destroy him. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploring Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. We hope this study has shed light on the significance of these verses and sparked your curiosity to dig deeper into the Bible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more enriching content. Don't forget to like, comment, and share with others who may find this study valuable. We look forward to continuing our exploration of the Bible together. Until next time, may you find wisdom and inspiration in your study of God's Word. Thank you for being a part of our community.